to present his uh, main results of the culprit study, complete versus lesion only primary PCI trial to treat the infarctuated artery only or all lesions in the coronary arteries. Professor Gerslick, please. Uh, Lars, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to discuss the complete versus lesion only primary PCI trial, the culprit trial. Uh, and I present this on behalf of uh, my co investigators in seven UK centres um, who uh, took part in this study. The background to this, of course, is that uh, multivessel disease is seen. Uh, in the setting of primary PCI in up to 40% of patients, depending uh, on the studies that you look at. And basically, here are two angios from the culprit trial. You can see a patient here has an occluded coronary artery, the thing that's brought them into hospital for their primary PCI. And here in the right coronary artery, there's a significant stenosis. And here, an occluded left, the right coronary artery, and here in the bottom panel, significant stenosis in the LAD. This is what we see in 30 to 40 percent of patients and the issue is what do you do about this non-infarct related artery stenosis. There's been a lot of meta-analysis, a lot of retrospective registry data, uh, very few uh, randomized trials. Basically this is one meta-analysis taken from uh, Rob Walsh's, Walsh's group in Canada and this meta-analysis here seems to suggest that mortality is improved overall if you treat the non-infarct-related artery uh, as well as the infarct-related artery the patient presents with. They also thought that there was a trend to improving long-term survival when done during the index PCI, but the studies are very heterogeneous. So there's a lot of controversy out there, a lot of debate. Uh, and there's belief that survival benefit from this meta-analysis is when it's staged, i.e. you do the thing that's brought the patient in, the blocked artery, and do the non-infarct-related artery at another time. So it remains controversial. As I say, retrospective registry data meta-analysis suggest outcomes are improved by treating the non-infarct-related arteries, but there are several questions that remain unanswered. How do you judge significance? Should you do FFR? Should you just do it by eye? Should you use IVUS? And when should you treat it? Should you treat it at the time of the imp when you're treating the blocked artery? Should you do it during that admission? Or should you delay and do it at another time? But one question that struck me when I started this trial in 2008 is if a clinician is presented with such a situation with significant stenosis in the non-infarct-related artery, should those be treated on that admission? That was my question. The registry data suggested not, as I've just shown you. But uh, Colin Berry, who's on the panel here, was part of the PRAMI trial, who at this meeting a year ago showed a reduction of 65% MACE, doing total revascularization at the time of the primary PCI, at that sitting. We started uh, culprit at about the same time, about 2008, independently. And both ask these similar questions, but there are distinct differences between the trials. Not least, we felt you could do it during the admission, didn't need to do it at the time of the PCI. So culprit is an open-label randomized study, UK study, seven centers, treatment of the infarct-related artery only, doing nothing else, or complete revascularization during that hospital admission. The randomization was stratified for site of infarct anterior or non-anterior, symptom on set to balloon. Uh, these are important confounders in outcome, therefore felt we needed to stratify them. Uh, one a particular characteristic of the culprit studies, we have CMR, looking at mechanistic issues, and nuclear sub-studies, which will be analyzed and presented in subsequent meetings. Our primary endpoint was MACE as a composite of total mortality, recurrent MI, with hard MI, not enzyme bumps, uh, heart failure, and ischemia-driven revascularization at 12 months. These are the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. So these are the results uh, of the uh, culprit trial. This is the primary endpoint for the, if you treat the infarct-related artery only and don't treat the non-infarct-related stenosis. And you see that over 12 months, this Kaplan-Meier curve suggests about a 20% incidence 
of mace. If you treat the complete revascularization, you get a significant reduction in mace at 12 months with a hazard ratio of 0.45. It's a highly significant reduction, 55% in mace if you treat everything at that admission. If we look at uh, this time to first event, you can see it actually, although the numbers are small, and therefore not significant, it does affect um, all uh, components of the primary endpoint. About a 50% or more reduction in all cause mortality, recurrent MI, heart failure, and repeat revascularization. I want to emphasize it's not just repeat revascularization that drives the endpoint. In fact, if you look at the total number of events reported, as shown here, you can see there's a sort of equal um, reduction in both all cause mortality and repeat revascularization. Now, obviously, these patients got more dye and uh, longer procedure, so there was always worry about uh, safety endpoints. And I'm pleased to say that we can see that uh, in terms of safety, uh, stroke, major bleeding, and contrast-induced nephropathy, there were no safety signals. We did do a, a, a Captain Meyer to 30 days to see when it was all happening. And uh, when you think about discharging the patient and perhaps bringing them back another time, you should take note of this figure, which does suggest, although not significant, that a lot's happening. There's a lot of separation in the first 30 days. So maybe discharging the patients and bringing them back at two months, uh, you may miss the bed, some of these benefits. So in summary, concludes, ladies and gentlemen, culprit demonstrated a 55% reduction in MACE in those patients presented for primary PCI when the non-infarct-related artery is all tre always treated, also treated on the index admission with no adverse safety signal. We should point out that the hard events, death, MI, and heart failure, were similarly reduced compared to repeat revascularization. This is just not a need to only do PCI to the non-infarct-related artery. It indicates that in-hospital treatment of non-infarct-related arteries seen during primary PCI results in improved outcomes, and I would suggest that this strategy may need to be considered by future STEMI guideline committees, particularly as the results mirror somewhat the PRAMI trial. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Gerschlich. Please, uh, questions are welcome. Yes, please. <coughs> Ed Sussman, MedPage today. What did you define as a significant blockage to, in, in order to um, um, continue the procedures? They, yeah. You know, how, how stenosed do the arteries have to be? Yeah, that's a very good question because, um, uh, as you know, uh, you can choose 50 or 70. We chose 70% in one plane and 50% in two planes. And I would emphasize, and will be shown in the presentation this afternoon, that more than 80% of patients had by eye more than 70% stenosis in the non-infarct-related artery. It's also been noted that these patients were randomized uh, before starting the infarct-related artery. So there was no uh, selection bias. Other questions? Yes, please. Oh. Hi, Melissa Walton, Shirley with theheart.org. How is this going to impact length of stay and the stance on third-party payers to, you know, the length of stay in the hospital. In the U.S. right now, you do a patient and they want you out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's always issues about, uh, about payment, and clearly if you get discharged from a U.K. hospital and brought back, then that's uh, there, there, there are two admissions. And uh, our system also supports somewhat that, but I think we need to decide what we're going to do best for patients. And uh, I think if we're continuing to show and we have a meta-analysis about to go to publication, that doing something, if we continue to show, and clearly this is a small study, um, if we if it maybe need to be confirmed by larger trials, I think there's no doubts about that. But if we continue to show that patients need to be revascularized during that admission, then so be it. Thank you. There's a question over there, yes. Hi, Shelley Wood with theheart.org. Did you, um, can you just describe the blinding that went on in the study? Were patients aware that they'd had all those different arteries treated? Yeah. Well, I, yes, of course. This is an open-label study, and uh, these are always the issues with such trials. Um, I don't think that you can uh, design such trials differently. Um, 
I think that the slight, the, the, the difference in overall hard endpoints uh, somewhat supports that. Uh, and the non, the non hard endpoint adjudications were done, of course, blinded by adjudicators who are blinded to the. Uh... Thank you, Professor Groschlik. We need, unfortunately,